Oh my God. I'm going to, I came on just a few minutes, well, one minute early. I thought I want to give everybody time just to kind of see, see that little red line um, around that live and be able to just have a minute to be able to come on here and then we're going to get started. So um, when you pop on, just say, hey. All right. So to give you some background information as people pop on here, a lot of people may not know, but I designed and manufactured, I did both designed and manufactured furniture for over 30 years. And that's how I got my start. I was creating and developing finishes to put on the furniture to be able to create a beautiful home, as I love to say, crafting a beautiful life. And so fast forward, when I realized that we throw away 20 million tons of furniture every year, I thought, you know what? Why don't I teach people how to rescue them, how to restore them? and how to redecorate with them. I wanna empower you, our customer, and a person that's a DIYer, but you wanna be able to have a home that's beautiful. You wanna be able to have beautiful furniture. So, hey, Miss Beth, Sherry, hey, Sherry. As you pop on here, please say hey. Hey, Becky, tell me where you're tuning in from, and I am so excited to see you on here. This is our tribe. Hey, Izzy, this is our tribe. These are people, we're all, we're sisters from a different mother. We all love the same thing. So, um, when I had my furniture collection, so one of the finishes, as all these years, 30 years, just think about it, that I had the Amy Howard collection, which my pieces are being sold on First Dibs, um, on Encore, on Cherish, on all these different sites. And as you will see the pieces that I had, the number one finish, are you hearing me? The number one finish for almost 30 years, but in a lot of different colors, was the finish that I'm going to show you today. Isn't that exciting? So before, I, I don't want to keep talking because I want you to learn how to do this. So um, I'll go back and I'll look at the comments and I'll say, hey, so we need to get started. All right, let's do this. So I'm going to go on and pull this down so I can turn it around. I want to make sure that you can see what I am doing. Let me turn that let me see if I can turn that light off. That way I don't have that shadow in there. All right, so um, the reason I show you on these finishes this is because I want you to be able to learn the process. If I can teach you the process, then you're going to be able to turn around and execute it on furniture. And as a, as a decorative artist, that's what I do. Right, so I will go to um, Lowe's or Home Depot. Sometimes I can get cabinet doors um, from Restore, and that is also what I will execute finishes on. But I'm in love with these. Are these not fab? I am totally in love with these because it allows me to be able to kind of have the, the finish and the feel to be able to see what my finish is going to look like on a piece of furniture. And that's the whole point um, of doing this and teaching you. So the first thing that we're going to work with today is going to be our one step. This is a fairly straightforward finish and I'm going to show you how to embellish it. And I've got these stepped out so I'm going to go fairly quickly. You don't have to stay on here for a long time. Um, I'm going to be able to take you through and I'm going to turn this into a blog post so that way you're going to see the step outs in writing as well. So we're going to start with a dark base of the one step. A lot of people will say, well Amy, can I do this process and the finish that you're going to be showing me today that was your number one finish when you manufactured furniture uh, with acrylic paint? I'm going to tell you no. You know why? Because a lot of even chalk paints on the market are just acrylic-based paints with flattening agents in them. And that is not going to give you a beautiful finish, and it's not going to crack like I want it to crack that I'm going to show you today. So... When you work with our one-step paint, it is a true calcium carbonate-based paint. It does not just have, um, it's not a glorified acrylic paint with a flattening agent. It's beautiful, strong calcium carbonate, which is what? Chalk. The part of the reason why we work with a chalk-based paint is because it's dead flat matte. And it allows us to be able to get these finishes and working with the milk paints and doing this finish that I'm going to show you today. Again, this was my number one finish when I manufactured furniture for almost 30 years. So that's why we did it in a lot of different colors. I'm going to show you today in black. So I'm going to dip my, my chip brush. This is a really thick chip brush into 
the one-step paint, and this is just black. And I'm going to go in and paint it on the piece. Now, I'm painting it on uh, raw wood because this is my trim. But very easily, you could be painting this on top of um, melamine. You could paint this on resin. You can paint this on metal. You can do this finish on metal. You can do it on an existing piece of furniture that actually has a finish on it. So I'm just showing you this because it gives you an idea of um, how to actually step it out. Now, the cool thing about it is um, one good coat of this black is going to give you fantastic coverage. So that's all I'm worried about. I don't need you to do more than one coat of the black. Are you ready? Now let's go to the next step. I'm going to put this off to the side. And guess what? I did one earlier and it's already dry. So look at the beauty of this. Now I will just tell you, I, I painted this yesterday trying to get ready for this Finish Friday. This paint goes on so well. It smells yummy. Um, this is one coat. This is just one coat on raw wood. So you can imagine the kind of coverage that you're going to get. If you're working on an existing piece and it has varnish on it, um, you can paint the one step on top of it. All you have to do is clean it with a clean slate. Now, a lot of people are like, what in the world is she talking about? The clean slate is basically a product that takes off the wax. You've got people that have used... Um, um, in the 70s, you know, as far as wax, pledge, um, end dust, you've got um, all of the, the slick kind of golden finishes that um, my mother used and probably y'all's too on furniture. We want to make sure we get all that off. But then just put on one coat of the black one step and you're ready for the next step. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to apply the cracked patina. Now, a lot of you have seen me work with this before, and it's a very pulled, grody finish. This finish is not like that. We call this our premier finish. This is what we sold, the number one finish, um, in the Amy Howard collection for almost 30 years. So I'm going to take my cracked patina, shake it up really good. Now, I will tell you, if you're working in a really, um, if it's really cold where you are, you can add a little bit of warm water to it. Allow this to get back to room temperature before you get ready to paint. Um, and if you want to thin it, you can, but I want it kind of syrupy. If you think about, I use this analogy with foods all the time. And if you think about this being the consistency of a really fabulous maple syrup, that's about the consistency that I want it to be. So now I'm going to dip my brush. And here's the other thing. The types of tools that you're using um, and the process, the direction, all that is very, very important. I don't want you to use um, a bristled brush of any kind, whether it's chip or synthetic or anything on this process. I want you to stay with a sponge brush. Why? Because one, I don't want the bristle marks in it um, to be in your finish when you're actually going to be applying the cracked patina. So I'm going to dip my sponge brush into the cracked patina, offload it just a little bit way you can turn around and do this finish. I will tell you, every room needs a little black. Every room. It anchors it visually. Some of the best designers that I have talked to, um, very famous designers, they say the same thing, that it anchors it. And I would do this on my little um, St. Regis stools, a lot of my Gustavian stools, a lot of our beds. We did this finish on it. So I'm showing you and I'm telling you the secrets. It's a secret. All right, so now I am, I've applied this once. Now I would continue to go over the whole thing, but for sake of time today, I want to walk through this very quickly for you so that way you can do it when you get home. So this is going to dry down um, in about 10 or 15 minutes. Then I'm going to apply another coat on top of it and let it dry. Now let me show you what it looks like. Once it's dry, it's like this. Look at it. It's very, very shiny. Now, tip. This is very important that you remember this. With a cracked patina, it really doesn't ever, like, dry. It's going to stay in this state because it's going to allow us to be able to get a texture to the finish. So this isn't, if you touch it and it's like one place here or there, you're going, that feels like it's kind of tacky. It will always be tacky. This has to be finished off with paint on top of it. So think about an Oreo cookie. This is, you've got your paint here. You've got your cracked patina in the center. That's your yummy Oreo filling. And then you're always going to sandwich it with a black paint on top. So, again, this was the number one selling finish that I did in the Amy Howard collection for almost 30 years. So, now, I'm going to turn this on. A, uh, see how shiny it is? 
that's the way it's gonna stay. There's another tip that I'm gonna give you that's very important and a good one to remember after we get to the next step. So let's go on and take our paint out. I'm using the same paint again. So if you wanna do this in a gorgeous Chinese red, you're gonna do Chinese red first. You're gonna do the cracked patina, all drying in between. Here's the other tip. Make sure that this cracked patina dries overnight, period. You can do two coats and I can dry it with a hair dryer in between, but make sure it dries overnight before you put this coat on. So now I'm gonna load my brush up with the one step again. Also, this cannot work with Miracle Paint. Miracle Paint is a um, water-based enamel and this will not work with, um, it will not work with Miracle Paint. It will not work with Milk Paint. This is only to be used with the one step. So now I'm going to, let me push that off to the side. Also, um, ask your questions on here and I always go back and I will answer them now, here's the other thing that I want you to do. Look how quickly I did that. It's very important to work very quickly. The other thing I don't want you to do is I don't want you to keep just kind of brushing over it because what's gonna start to happen, and you're gonna see this in just a minute, this paint is gonna start cracking. It's gonna start pulling, and I can take another brush, depending on the degree that I want it to be able to pull. Now, can you see this with the light? Look at this. See how this is starting to dry down here and this is still wet? Look, I wanna get that closer. Can you see that? Look, do you see what's happening? It's starting to crack. But now what I don't wanna do, I'm not gonna leave it like that. I'm gonna come back. Now, this is a positive tool. This is a negative tool. This is positive because it has paint on it and I'm applying it over the surface. Then this is a negative tool because I can pull it off. So now I'm just gonna come here and you notice I'm not going to hold it like this. My hand is going to go on top because it's more of a dragging motion. So I'm just going to lay this here and I'm just barely touching it. I'm just barely touching it and look, I'm pulling it. Can you see that? I've tried to have this camera close enough that you can see it. I'm just pulling it. What that does, here's the other thing. What else do you notice? I'm not going a lot of different directions. I am pulling it with my negative tool the same direction that I am going that I applied my paint. I don't wanna go this way. Here's the other thing. A lot of people, when they apply the cracked patina, they'll go up this way and they'll go that way. Don't do that. You will get a cross hatching effect and it will look very messy. Apply your paint one direction, apply your cracked patina one direction, and then do the top coat the same direction. So now I'm gonna come here. I'm just pulling it. Now, here's the time frame that I've got to do this in. I've got a very short time frame, so I cannot put my paint all over um, this top coat all over my entire piece. I'm going to work in sections. So usually I'll do one drawer at a time. I will do um, the side of my armoire. I will do one, one door. So that way I have it completely from start to finish, I can put that paint on and I'm overlapping it as I go. Now I'm gonna hit this really lightly with a hairdryer. I've already got it to the next step, but I just want you to see this. So I'm just drying this to the touch. Because I want you to see something. What do you notice? The, when, as the paint starts to dry down, it's gonna look very matte. The paint will look matte, but guess what you're gonna have? Do you see the shiny poking through? What was that? Well, that's from my cracked patina right here. So the cracked patina is poking through and it's really shiny. We don't want that. So I'm gonna allow this to dry for a couple of hours. I can hit it with a hairdryer. It can dry overnight. I can come back to it. Or you know what I would even do? Go work on the other parts of your project. Work on the drawers, work on the doors, work on the top. And so now I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna dip my brush back in my one step and I'm gonna come back on top of it. This is the key. When I see people post things online and I'm like, they didn't go back and add another coat. Even if you like the consistency of it, I want you to come back and do a coverage and cover up because I don't want to see those shiny cracks through. I want to be able to see the texture like this because it's really going to be pretty. 
All right, so now I've got one already to this stage. Look at this. It's dried overnight. Now I'll tell you what I did do. Before we went live, I took a little bit of 320, 320 sandpaper, and I'm just barely going over this, only for the way it feels. Now, I'm going to go in and take my gloves off because I want to show you how to be able to do a detail. When you're creating beautiful finishes on furniture, guys, it's all about the texture. If you go up and you feel an antique, you, it's not going to feel like it's just been painted. It's not going to feel rough. But when you touch something that's got a patina to it, that's been around for a long, long time, it feels good. So you've got to be able to take your gloves off. And you've got to be able to feel this and rub your hands over it so nothing's pulling your hand and that it's got just a beautiful feel. Now, I will tell you, turning this, if you can kind of see it, the texture to it is absolutely yummy, but we're not finished. Now, I want to show you something. The little St. Regis stools that I had that we sold in our line for years and years, um, we would add striping to it that was gilded. Now, I've got some tape that I want to show you. The way that you can create detail, look at this. We could add a little bit of gilding here. We could add a little bit of gilding here. But I want you to look at a piece, especially the plainer that is, the more special that you can make it just by adding a little bit of striping and a little bit of banding. So I'm just going to take some, um, some scotch tape here. This is a um, scotch blue 2090. I usually like using a paint that um, a painter would use on lacquer. And basically, I'm going to lay my tape down about right here. Now, of course, I need to make sure that this is dried um, really well. I usually like, after I've put the cracked patina and two coats on top of it, I like to let it dry overnight. So now, I'm just going to lay that down here. Then I'm going to come back with the paint. A lot of people, as far as the gilding, I want to show you. Let me show you. When you are gilding something, this is a little piece that I have in my cabinet. See what the gold, this is bool under here, that red. Now, this piece is actually um, a couple of hundred years old. It's been water gilded, and this is something that I teach in my, um, in my retreats. I teach you how to water gild, but that red right there, how it's just kind of worn through, is what we're going to simulate um, with this piece of um, tape and the trim that we're creating. So we're going to lay this kind of reddish clay color down, but the one step that I use that's closest to that color, once you antique it, is um, Charm School. So here's the red. This is just Charm School one step. So if you wanted to do this on a project, you could actually just order the sample size and it would be ample for you to be able to lay that underneath your leaf. So now I'm going to come back with um, an artist brush, and I'm going to dip it down into my, hang with me, I'm going to go fast, I promise. I'm going to lay this down here, and I'm, I'm trying to make sure that I don't get a ton on, because I don't want it, I didn't really burnish my tape a whole lot. Normally, I'll come back and I'll burnish that edge with my brush if I was working and I wasn't doing a live day. All right, so now let's dry this. And I've got one over here that I already did before we went live. So I'm gonna pull this off. So see there, wait, I've got my banding. You can just do that with tape and I will tell you, banding and striping can create so much glorious detail um, on a piece of furniture. I just love it. So now, after my one step, my charm school has dried, I'll come back and I'll add just a little bit of more tape again. I'll pop that on there like that. And now I'm going to come back with my gilding size. You can't use anything else but size when you're going to be gilding. It's imperative. It's, it's part of the nature of the beast of working with leaf. And I'm going to show you 
I'm going to put this on first. And I'm putting this directly on top of the Charm School One Step because we're trying to simulate what I showed you of having the bool under the gold where it wears through. That's what we're going for. So now it's important, now I need to tape my tape off because I don't want the tape and this to kind of dry together. So I'm just gonna remove it like this. And now as this starts to dry, what you're gonna notice when you start to put it on, it looks white. But as it dries down to what we call tack and gilding, T-A-C-K, tack, it's gonna go clear and it will be shiny. You wanna make sure that you get 100% coverage on this because, um, yes, it's a glue for gold leaf. I kinda saw that. Um, that it, it's going to get to tack. And the way you check this is you're gonna tap it with your ring finger. The reason we do that, our ring finger is the weakest finger in our hand. And so it will pull, it'll pull the skin on your finger. It won't hurt. It's just a lot, enough to let you know that you've almost come to tack. So now I'm gonna go on and open up my leaf. I want you to be able to see. When you open this up, the leaf is in a book like this. And it has 25 pages in it. And when you pull this back like this, it's gonna allow you to see how they're stored in here. Now what I'm gonna do, because I'm working on such a small area, there's no need for me to have this entire book. So I'm gonna cut it down. But you, you always work with the entire book. So I'm just gonna cut this like this. I can tell I need to get some new scissors in here. So now as I'm holding it, I'm always going to hold it with the spine. We call it a book and books have spines and holding this together. And now I'm going to pull this back over here. I'm gonna test it. Yes, it's a great tack. It's kind of, it's toasty in my studio. Um, so it's gonna work great. Now here's the other thing. I wore gloves when I was painting, so I don't have anything sticky on my hands. Make sure that your hands are very clean. And sometimes I'll just get baby powder and I'll put baby powder on my fingers before I start to gild because I don't want my fingers sticking to the tissue um, that actually has the leaf on it. So now I'm gonna pull this back like this holding it all together. I'm gonna pull that little piece so I can hold the entire book. Got one of those little guys that just kind of fell off. And I'm gonna turn this around and lift that tissue at the same side, same time. So now let me pull this up. I'm gonna lay that, I'm gonna act like that wasn't even there and I'm gonna lay all of this on top of it and I burnish it while I'm doing that. Now I'm gonna cheat just a little bit and I'm gonna put this guy right here and fill that in. Pull it back, let's do that again. And it's really and truly all of the, um, the stools, the benches, the mirrors, the trumeaux, everything that we did in the Amy Howard collection, if we wanted to be able to add some detail to it, we would do this and it really made it look very rich. All right, so I'm gonna just start to burnish this with a little bit of pressure. I've got a clean brush again, and I'm gonna, as I brush this off, you'll start to see it's gonna come off where we did not have the size. If you missed some places with the size, don't let it upset you because you know what? We're going for um, a more of an old world distressed finish. So now what am I doing? I went this direction to get it all off and I'm laying my brush down pretty flat. Now what I'm doing? I am now going against it. Look how I'm laying my brush down and I am literally, you hear that? It's getting off that excess. All right, so now let's clean our board just a little bit. Usually I'll have a little Tupperware container and I'll have it here so that way I can put my, my loose gold leaf in it. Now, I hope, I hope y'all stayed with me because this is something that I want you to know and it's very important. Don't ever use this on leaf. 
You never, ever, 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 ever use sandpaper on gold leaf. It scratches it. It ruins the patina. It messes it up. It, it, it looks um, offensive. And so what we want to be able to do, we're going to use a 4 aught. It's the finest steel wool. It's 4 aught zero 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 steel wool. This is just a great tool to have in your DIY pantry when you're wanting to do projects. Because that way, look, what do we want? Let's go back. What are we doing again? Let's get that red to go through um, that we want to be able to have showing through our gold. So now I'm just going to... As a rule, I wouldn't be doing it this fast. Can you see that? Look. See how now that red is showing through? Yummy. Yummy, yummy. You know, in, in areas like this, if it really bothers you, take an X-Acto knife and just kind of go in and try to get some of that off. Notice the other thing that we did after we did the cracked patina, and we've got this glorious texture, um, I lightly sanded it with 320. Now, stay with me. We're on the home stretch. I'm going to go on and put some gloves on again. All right, so now what are we going to do? We're going to go on and head over. Hang with me because it, the final reveal is what you go, oh, my, I see what she's saying now. All right, so now I'm going to open up, let's see, I'm going to open up my light wax. So this light wax, um, I usually, when I'm doing this old world finish, this is what we used in the studio. So I do not want to use um, Mind Your Own Beeswax because I like the color, this ambery color that I have in this wax. So now I'm just going to go on and apply it directly over the leaf. I'm coming over the finish. I'm coming over the leaf. Oh, look at that. Do you see the texture? Yummy, yummy, yummy. This is still such a great finish, the texture to it. If you look at something that's just plain, um, a black smooth finish, let's go back to the one we started with. Look at this. See, like, that's just a plain black smooth finish. That's the one step, but look at this. This is absolutely, look at that. See the difference? This is this is yummy on a different level. All right, so now let's go on and finish. I want to go up because I want you to see this. When I am working on um, creating a, a really pretty black finish, not all the time do I use dark wax. That's an option. Because when, it, when you're working with the, um, when you're working with the gold, you want to be able to have it because what is it? What do you think it does? Do y'all know? It sets it back. It allows you to be able to set that gold back because when you've got a really beautiful old world finish like this, which the trend that we're going, I'm so happy, um, is all about um, antiques again. It's about, um, they call it grandma decorating. I guess that's me because I'm a grandma. But it really sets it back. So this dark wax allows you to be able to set this this gold back. So let me show you how I do that a lot of times. I'll just take my steel wool or a rag and let's I'm going to do this part because I want you to be able to see the difference. Look at that. If I wanted to, I could even these gloves allow me to be able to do all kinds of stuff. Now we'll say when I have used, let's, let's look at the difference. Can you see the difference? I can come back and add a little bit more if I wanted with a brush, if that's a, a preference that you prefer. I'm just wanting you to show you that there are, there are options. So I can stipple it just a little bit depending on how much I wanna be able to set that gold back because that way when I come back and I'm going to be buffing it, now I want you to, see, do you see the difference? Look at that. So using the dark wax on the gold, it sets it back. It makes it make more sense when we're doing more of an old world finish. So I want to do this side because I want it to all be the same. So I will tell you, there are still 
some furniture manufacturers that are doing finishes like this, and they're sold in design centers. And it's a very expensive finish. We called it our premier finish. And um, again, it was our number one selling finish for almost 30 years. So now, look what I'm going to do. I hate this and the fact that I'm, I have to do this kind of quickly on these finished Fridays. I'm going to release just a little bit of this wax that I've got on here because I really want this to, I want the wax to come to tack too. I want it to dry for about 20 to 30 minutes. That way when I touch it, it's not greasy um, because I want to be able to come and I want to add some dust of ages to it. So now I'm going to come back with a clean brush, offload it just a little bit, and I'm going to lay this over everything. You're getting ready to see a major transformation. We've gone from just painting something to where now we're going to create a beautiful cabinet finish. When I tell you this is taking it to a whole new level, now you're going to see all the work that you did. Oh, good grief. I never get to the point. This doesn't just excite me. Because you're going to be able to see the work that you did with the cracked patina. Here's the other thing I don't want you to do. Don't overdo the buffing where it looks like it's just been handled and we've just got this beautiful, warm, waxed finish. Let's go up to the top. Truly, I mean, when I talk about the, um, the furniture pieces that I have sold that I still see for sale on different websites that I designed and created... A lot of people don't know, but I actually um, also made the furniture for Schumacher for almost 18 years. And this was a very, um, this was a very favorite finish of the folks that actually ordered my Schumacher pieces. So I'm wanting to get that up here because I want you to see now. And I want some of it to stay down in the crevices. Definitely, I've got this going on here. I want it to stay. I'm going to buff this just a little bit. You can come back if you want. If you've getting, gotten some areas and it goes a little gray on you, you can just buff it with some steel wool. Look at that. Can you see that? Can you see the, look at the texture. Isn't that just yummy? Do y'all love that? I know. It's just like, gee whiz. How beautiful. I want to raise this because I want you to be able to see it just a little bit more. Look at this. Such, such a yummy, yummy finish. Now, I've got to go over and finish the rest of my piece here. So, I've got something to be able to have in my studio. But, I want it to be where you... I want to turn this around. Hold on. There we go. Look, 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 look. Look. Look at this finish. Look. Now, here's what I love. It's so tactile. Look how we've set that back. Look at the texture. See, see where we pulled it with that cracked patina? When you've got a piece, my heart, See, Becky, that's why you're in my tribe, that it, it's don't over buff it. Here's the thing. It's about subtlety. It's about it really being beautiful and, and the texture. When you go up and you feel a piece like this and you're able to see that bull, which um, the bull and the gold that I did is just absolutely yummy. And I know that there are those of y'all that... Um, you're, you've, you've moved on. You are so into um, your milk paints and creating gorgeous finishes. But, you know, there's still, there's still an audience of people on here that I want to be able to teach the basics. This is totally um, one of the best finishes as far as being a decorative finisher that you could create. And definitely something that you can go rescue a piece of furniture from 
wherever. Go to Restore, go to Habitat. Um, and this is an absolutely glorious finish. So hop on there, get your supplies, and then that way I want you to turn around and create this and show me. Go on the Amy Howard at Home Before and After page, and guess what? Enjoy the bragging rights. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you so much for your loyalty. Thank you for how you love on us, and thank you for allowing us to come into your home and teach you how to do this. Have a great day.